Scientists in West Antarctica have captured a first-of-its-kind seafloor mapping near the world's widest glacier, which is shrinking at a pace that could one day raise global sea levels up to 10 feet, according to the University of South Florida. U.S., U.K. and Swedish researchers deployed underwater robots close to the seafloor of the Thwaites Glacier to retrieve data, said Dr. Alistair Graham a Geological Oceanography Associate Professor at the University of South Florida. Graham led the study released Monday. Webb essentially found Thwaites has a speed limit that's higher than what we expected it to have, Graham told USA Today. Experts say what they've learned about its ability to quickly retreat raises concerns for the future. concern with the Thwaites Glacier, also nicknamed the Doomsday Glacier, is its size. The approximately 70 square mile glacier is as big as Florida, according to Graham. Researchers in June said the glacier may be losing ice at its fastest pace in the past 5 years, according to the International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration. It locks up so much sea level in that one glacial system that we can't not focus attention on it because it's critical to how we view our Waves has the potential to rewrite our coastlines for everybody on the planet. Here's what to know about the retreating Thwaites Glacier. The Thwaites Glacier has been on scientists' radar for at least 30 years, Graham said, but its recent thinning and accelerated melting speed made it a focus more recently. It's actually melting probably from beneath, mostly on the ocean side, Graham said speeding up, so the amount of ice that is coming out into the ocean, a bit like a conveyor belt, is getting faster, and it's also shrinking inland. More, Florida-sized Doomsday Glacier losing ice at fastest rate in 5, 500 years, study says robots captured high-resolution images of the seabed J. The images showed traces of where Thwaites left imprints of where it once sat. Scientists will use the more than 160 parallel ridges, described as rib-like formations, to examine Thwaites' historical activity and make predictions about its future possible movement, according to Graham. One particular seafloor area shows Thwaites retreated over a six-month period, though Graham said it's not clear when it happened. It could have been, maybe 200 years ago, or maybe even more recently in the mid-20th century, so the 1940s or 1950s when we weren't even watching Thwaites, Gray MS. But it was going back at a rate that's at least twice what it's retreating at right now. There's a high chance of a repeat occurrence, Graham noted. 